So just normal seat belt? Just a normal seat belt. There's no harness back there, is there? There's no harness okay. back there. Okay. You're getting loose. All right. That's about 5% throttle. If you think of the, the Fitbit terminal, the technology where you can go for a run and I can go for a run, we can compare, we can do the same for drifting now. I'm used to a T28 and an SR, so... Hi guys, Josh Roder from Drift Life here. Today we're down at Calder Park Raceway in Melbourne and we've been invited down here by the guys from Battlers to test out their latest uh, Battlers Panda Drift Data Unit. But first things first, we're going to learn a bit more about the unit and how it all works. Okay guys, so why Drift Data? I think there's a, many different reasons why it can be beneficial for you. Uh, from a competitive point of view, if you're in competition, you're looking for an advantage, from a self-improvement perspective, if you just want to know what you're doing and how you can be better. Uh, there's the uh, curiosity point of view, you just might want to know what's going on. It could be for testing, you want to test changes back to back. Uh, there's judging aspects to this as well. So there's a whole raft of applications uh, that can be beneficial in terms of data. So we're going to speak to uh, Michael Fenuccio, who is the Battlers founder, and we'll have a chat to him about what this unit is all about and why it's revolutionary. Okay, Michael, so what is Battlist and why is it special? So, Battlist is a product that we developed so you can have more fun in your drift car. Um, we found that uh, there was nothing like on the market that we found that we could tell us how we were driving. We really wanted to know. There was no point where we could uh, identify how we were driving before, how we were driving after, and we felt like that level of uh, knowledge in the sport was added a really fun layer to how you drive. And, uh, after developing the product, found it was really, really cool. Tell us about the accuracy of this unit. So, our traditional mobile phone, you've got about 10 meters uh, accuracy as far as GPS yeah. uh, correction. Tell us about what you can do with, yeah. with the so we've, got a, so, we've got a really high accuracy GPS chip that lives in the battle uh, panel that lives on your dash. We use some really interesting mathematics with some other sensors that we place around the car and with some error correcting we can get that accuracy down about a meter, half a meter. So traditionally we're breaking some really cool barriers at accuracy with GPS um, and that translates some really on, really cool on-track data as well. What is revolutionary about the battles? Well, good question. So your level of accuracy is number one, is probably paramount. We've been able to get super sophisticated accurate data in a really tight package. The price point's really good. We've tried to bring it to a price point where you have your drifter can go and buy it. Um, we don't want it to be a super expensive, sophisticated piece of hardware where hey, you could understand it or you couldn't access it because it was too expensive. So we wanted everyone to be able to get on it, um, use it, utilize it, have fun and improve their driving and have fun. Um, and the third thing is that we've broken some barriers with our interface, the way that the data is presented. You don't need to swap SD cards into computers and read charts of data to see what's going on. There's a web app and a mobile app and you just, you go for a drive, you review it and there's data. It's really, really easy and really innovative to use and, uh, and fun. Fun, it's fun and easy to use. Yep, now we're gonna go out and test this uh, ourselves. Uh, shortly we're gonna head out in the Battle of Supra behind us. Um, but Michael, so I believe there's uh, a function that allows you to do live data. Tell yes. us about that in a nutshell. So because the Battlers Panda can talk to your phone in a, with a mobile app, um, we utilize that technology and you can stream your, your drive live. So anyone over the world can see how you're driving or we'll watch how you're driving later. Um, and that opens up some really cool stuff. Your, the guys in the pit can see how you're going, your spotters can see how your car's performing, and judges can actually see how you're going in the live aspect as well. So it opens up the possibilities to be able to watch and rewatch lives, uh, live runs as, as drives go around. The, the unit's quite small as well. Tell us in basic form how it works and what you need to actually make it all going in your car. So yeah, it's about the size of a pack of cigarettes at the moment. Uh, we've worked with some really cool um, component manufacturers such as Bosch, um, who've been able to supply some really cool cutting edge um, chips that we've utilized. Um, and then we can extrapolate really cool stuff out of that. Speed, rate to angle, how much drift lock you have. Um, possibilities are huge. What about the motorsport social platform that you're trying to get underway? Um, and com uh, compare that in terms of what we know with uh, fitness type stuff, like our Fitbit and yeah. how I run, all that type of stuff. How does that apply to what we're doing for drift and motorsport? So yeah, if you think of the, the Fitbit terminal, the technology where you can go for a run and I can go for a run, we can compare, we can do the same for drifting now. 
um, didn't exist before. You can go for a drive, drift, see what your angle was. Me and you can battle each other theoretically in uh, in the battles platform. Um, we can get judged on a corner, and we can we can see who's better, who drives it better, faster, bigger angle. Um, there is a platform now where um, anyone can compete with each other. It's that's where the, the battle is sort of terminology. You don't want to just roll this out to drifting. Obviously, it's uh, your primary. Uh, focus at the moment, you have been a drifter for many years, um, and yep. so that's where your focus is, but obviously the application is a lot wider than just drifting. Yeah, so we've had we've had some really cool experiences putting the units in different type, types of cars, go-karts, boats, drag cars. Um, the technology is so awesome, it can yeah be applied to different aspects of different motorsports. Like for drag racing, you can see how much side sit your car has, um, and it also represents really good value where Typically, this type of style of data logger, they, they range in the thousands of dollars. But this data logging, the, the technology that's in it, its capability, um, the price point is actually really good. A uh, similar data logging unit for, you know, drag car will be in the, the two to three thousand dollar range. Our, our product's going to be, you know, around the five hundred four hundred dollar range. So you get similar functionality for, yeah, not much of the cost. Rolling it out again, so I need to would be buying the unit. I'd get the app. And yep. the app would then be able to display what I'm doing in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, I can download my data onto your system yep. uh, through website and cloud and all that. Yeah, so there's the Panda product, the physical product that you saw in your car. Yep. There's a phone app that, can, that talks to that. And then from that interface, you can upload your data to our, our website where you can analyze it further. You can review it on the phone and then you can do some other interesting analytical type stuff. Like that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's, yeah. Hardware, app, and then the cloud server. So it's three three aspects of the product. All right, awesome. Well, thanks to Michael for explaining a bit more about it, and we're going to head out on track and see what it does in the real world. Enjoy. We decided to test the drift box side by side with Battleus Drift Bit. The drift box was the first real player in this space, but is now showing its age, having been around for a decade. After testing the drift box a few years back and being disappointed with the way the data was presented, when Battleus came into view, I was immediately interested. We're in the uh, Battleus Supra to test out Battleus and the Panda unit, which we've got sitting up here. That's the drift session. And we're away. So we're in third gear at the moment in this uh, 1J Supra with a slightly bigger turbo. That's about 5% throttle. Doesn't have a lot of steering lock. <laughs> I actually expect it slightly more, but we'll just uh, balance it hopefully with. Lighting. <laughs> I'm sure fourth gear and fifth gear light too, but I'm not very confident with the car and uh, it wants to step out ridiculously quickly, as you can see there. Using the replay, we can clearly see how fast the Battleus unit responds to this quick slide. This corner is ridiculous normally and there's mud everywhere and that's about 10 kilometers an hour. Lie. After my session, I went online and was able to check exactly how fast I was. 42 kilometers an hour. No, Michael, I didn't spin during my session. And it just rotates. <laughs> Got a good dip on it though, so uh, I reached the limit there. And Michael was like, What do you call this then? The data never lies. Yeah, it's a cool little car. I need to just improve my driving, it's <laughs> very rusty, but that was good fun. And then we can end drive. That was cool, bit of 80s super action. After debriefing with Michael, we headed back out later on in the day when it was dry this time with a camera facing both data units. Cool.
get some more drift data from uh, Battleist's Panda unit. Got plenty of power in the drive. <laughs> I'm used to a T28 and an SR, so... Right. Woo. Okay, Joss, stop booting it. Concentrate. So, far left is Battleist, angle on top and speed below, while drift box is to the right, it has the speed on its left side and angle is larger in the middle. You're better off focusing on angle between the two, as speed is for the most part relatively in line for both units. You can see on this run the drift box takes a long time to clear the angle, which is quite an inflated figure from what it was in reality. Again here, the drift box was moving around in angle with quite extreme readings. Oh, those bumps are throwing me everywhere. <laughs> uh, it's loose. Here it threw up a spin and it didn't clear for a while, which is interesting. That happened a couple of times. Keep in mind about 35 degrees and up is normally a spin in that Supra. We ended up with a spin reading again here. I've had a chance to reflect on my drive out at Calder Park with the guys from Battleist in their Supra. I was calling the unit a Panda. They've since renamed it to Driftbit and I think that name fits the purpose of what it does a lot nicer. To put together this video, I had to review all the data from both of my runs. So I had one run in the dry, one run in the wet. And it was great to see what I was doing on track in terms of the actual speed I was entering corners. Uh, line and the angle I was hitting. I'm sure if I was doing a full day on the same track in the same conditions it would be particularly interesting to see how I progressed. The drift bit seemed to be very accurate when we compared it side by side with the drift box as well. It's a much newer technology and it was much more responsive to what we were doing with angle and the speed. The potential for the drift bit in terms of what it can do from a live point of view, what it can do from a judging point of view, and the social media motorsport angle is really interesting and I look forward to that. The guys at Battleist have been developing the drift bit for a couple of years now. They've been using the best drifters in the world to get feedback, tweaking the software, tweaking the hardware, and it's all designed here in Australia by a small team. So that's fantastic and I wish them all the best in that and they're just about at the stage where they're gonna go into production. I've heard some good things about what they're gonna do with the final product as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I have to give a shout out to Michael, of course, for letting me drive his 1J Supra with a big turbo in the wet at Calder Park. That was scary, but a lot of fun. And if you want more information on the Battleist Drift Bit, you can check out the links below the video and please also follow Drift Life on YouTube and Facebook page and driftlife.com.au.